Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This question is from Mike Odom, K4MTO. It's a very interesting question. We addressed this a little bit in one of the Thursday night sessions. I'll address it a little bit more here, and uh, there will be upcoming videos uh, on this. The question is from Mike Odom. He says, hope you are enjoying the better weather and spending some time in the air. Yes and yes. My question, with all the test equipment out there, how do we verify the accuracy of their measurements, especially antenna tuners, watt meters, and SWR meters, not to mention uh, digital voltmeters, DVMs? It may be moot, and we have to trust somebody. But how can we guarantee our equipment is calibrated? Or who makes the best equipment for ham radio? Well, that's a very complicated question. And I want to just back this up here and we'll talk a little bit about the science of metrology. First of all, let's spell that. Metrology. Okay, the OG means the study of study of measuring the study of measuring many years ago in the 1800s there was a war uh, over in what is today the Ukraine it's called the Crimean War and the British were fighting in it canning of food had just been developed and one of the favorite things to can was meat. And the way you can something is you put it in the metal container, okay? And then you heat it. You heat it to cook all the food inside. And then that will stay sterile until it's open. Now what happened in the Crimean War was there was some spoiled meat. It got botulism is what it got in there. And um, they would open the cans of meat and it would be poisonous. And uh, there was a big stir about that because this was food that had been supplied to the, um, you know, the Royal Forces over there and uh, the British Imperial Forces. And there was a huge hoofra in the um, British scientific community because they didn't have any way to tell uh, when canned food was good and when it wasn't. Now, obviously what happened was that the food was not cooked long enough in the cooker to completely kill all the microbes. And so the microbes that were in there grew. And if you ever have a can that looks like it's puffed up like this, don't touch it. Take it back to the grocer, get a replacement. Uh, because when it puffs up like that, uh, there's often botulism involved, and botulism can be fatal. Uh, so what the British did in response to that was they started measuring everything. They developed scales for temperature, the Fahrenheit scale. They developed uh, uh, scales for pressure and, and uh, for weight and all of these kinds of things. By the way, uh, the pound, um, a pound is something, you know, pound of meat. It, pound is actually a force, not a measure of mass. Uh, the equivalence that we have between them assumes uh, Earth's gravity at the surface. Um, but there was this tremendous effort that just snowballed well beyond the Crimean War case to be able to measure everything exactly and have this guy's temperature measurements and this guy's temperature measurements match. And that's where the study of metrology, the study of measuring comes in. Now this is of a mature science, although they are still making some fundamental changes. Here is a book that I'm going to show you that was sent to me by uh, an amateur, Harry. Um, Harry, uh, oh, and his last name escapes me. Oh, here it is, Harry Rundle. Harry Rundle sent this to me to borrow, 
This book is called Philosophy and Practice. It's made by Fluke. Fluke is a company that makes high quality measuring equipment. Okay. And it talks about all kinds of things. How to measure, what is measured, what tools to use, how to use them, and so on. Okay. Now, this is a very complicated book for a very complicated subject. But let me tell you just in general how it works. There's an SI, which is French for the International System of Measures. Okay, and there are SI basic units, um, the unit of. Uh, Acceler uh, let's see, it would be distance, distance, and the um, basic unit is one meter, uh, time one second, is it's in seconds, um, uh, the, and there, there are many different uh, types of measurements. Um, there are like f six or seven so-called fundamental units. All other units are derived from it, including volts and so on. Now, what is a standard meter? Well, the standard meter is defined as basically uh, how far light travels in a certain amount of time. Uh, but the way it actually works is there's a master standard. Okay. For years, there was a platinum bar in Paris with two scratches on it. And the scratches defined the, um, the length of a meter. And so there would be secondary standards that would match this within a certain precision. And then these were distributed to countries like the US, the UK, and so on. This is all in France. Um, it may have been moved to Geneva by now, I don't know, but it was in France that this was all done. Um, France was the leader in science back <clears throat> in the period of time this was done. So here's how it works. According to this book, which describes how to measure things, you have a standard. There are two kinds of standards. There's the primary and the secondary. Okay, and so let's take one volt. There is in the US one ultimate standard held by, guess who? The old US Bureau of Standards, now known as NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, okay. And they exist today. They're very, very active. These are the people who run WWV. These are the people who have the National Atomic Clock, although the Naval Observatory gets involved in that too. This is where your standards come from in the United States. And these people coordinate with the uh, people at the international level. I had a friend, David Allen, a number of years ago, he worked at National Bureau of Standards, and his primary work was associated with the definition of the second. One second. You'd be surprised how much work goes into defining the length of a second. You can use a cesium clock. The cesium clocks uh, are extremely accurate over very, very, very long time frames. However, uh, on a very short time frame, there can be a little jitter in the length of the second. Rubidium clocks are not as good over the long term, but have better short term stability. I mean, it was getting into this kind of thing. I remember once he told me he was in Europe to be there for the International Consultative Committee on the definition of the second. And uh, <laughs> so it's. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, basically, 
uh, they've, they're putting it together a new atomic clock that has accuracy such that if it had started at the beginning of the universe, it would be off by less than one second now. That's how accurate it would be. But be that as it may, every company that makes quality gear, and I'm going to include in this fluke um, and others, they, have, they make voltmeters and stuff. They'll have a primary standard, one primary standard. You can't have more than one. You gotta have one. Okay, and then, and then this is checked periodically with other companies' primary standards, and it's checked with the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And yes, there are certificates, and there are measurements, and there are reports, and you would not believe the administrivia that goes with this. Then all the instruments that it makes are compared with a secondary standard. They might have one at a plant in Baltimore, and they might have one at a plant in Houston, you know, um, that all their instruments. This is traceable to this, which is traceable to the international. Traceability is important, okay? Now, it is possible to buy lab instruments that are certified, and you've got this traceability. Be prepared to dig deep into your wallet to get such a standard. For ham radio, let me show you the standard tool. Okay, the standards, the standards are needed when you need accurate measurements. Now the question is, how accurate do you need your measurements? Now as I've mentioned before, in ham radio, going out to three digits of precision is usually enough, except for one thing, and that's frequency. Frequency we want measured to the hertz. So that's one part per 10 million at 10 megahertz, okay? Whereas it's one part in a thousand, uh, or maybe one part in a hundred. This is the amateur standard. This is from Harbor Freight. And you turn it on, and it measures volts, and uh, ohms, and DC amps, not too very many, and so on, AC volts. Um, and this instrument is available for less than ten dollars okay so if you want an instrument that is traceable you would go to somebody like fluke and get yourself a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar instrument or you go to harbor freight and get one of these how much different is one of these from the really accurate instruments and the answer is not much but some for example i noticed a, a watt meter an mfg watt meter that i have it reads low by about 10 percent uh, i measured that against my oscilloscope which is actually has a certificate of traceability inside of regal's uh, lab I mean, it's designed to be a lab-grade instrument, okay? Um, and it's just a little different. Now, this will measure just about anything a ham radio operator needs. Is the battery still good? Sure, test with this right here. Is the resistor 50 ohms or 500? You can tell with this thing right here. Um, all those kinds of things, you know, is, am I really getting 12 volts through this? Is it 13 volts? You can tell with this thing right here. Um, this is probably about two and a half digits of precision, and this type of thing will do. This will not measure true RMS voltage for non-sinusoidal AC waveforms. But when was the last time you needed the RMS value of a non-sinusoidal waveform? I can't remember the last time I've needed that. Okay, so if I need that, 
I'll go over to the scope. And the scope, the uh, oscilloscope, was a $525 instrument. This was eight. So there you go. For ham radio, um, what you get is good enough for our ham radio usage. Now, if you were in a broadcasting station and you were measuring plate voltage or something like that, you probably would want to get it accurate because the FCC has limits on what you can do and you have to measure your frequency, you have to measure plate voltage so you can get transmit power out and the power can't exceed. You want it to be right up against uh, what the limit is, but you can't go over it. So you need more accurate test equipment. But for ham radio, we're fine. Who makes the best equipment for ham radio? Whatever works for you. Now, one other little thing about metrology. If you have instrument A, and it measures 8.67 volts, this is an estimate of the current voltage, okay, 8.67. We don't know what the actual voltage is. No one can know what the actual voltage is because we can only measure within certain tolerances. Now your experience with this meter is pretty good. So you say your estimate of that voltage is 8.67. Well now let's suppose that you have another identical instrument and it measures 8.65 volts. Boom, what do you do now? Well, if these are equivalent instruments, like two, two of the Harbor Freight thing, okay, your best estimate is 8.66 volts. Okay, you average the two. Now, let's suppose this over here is a super lab grade instrument, and it's 8.65, and this is your cheap Harbor Freight thing right here at 8.67, you'd go more with the 8.65. You tend to weight the instruments that have better known accuracy over the instruments that don't. Okay, so you might go with 8.65 on this right here. Now, if I were measuring the battery output voltage, <laughs> I'd be lucky to have it within tenths of a volt of 8 volts or something like that. So anyway, that gives you a little hint at the study and practice of the arcane and very interesting science known as metrology. For amateur radio use, pretty much anything you pick up will be fine. I would recommend, you know, sometime in your amateur life, get yourself a fluke meter, um, a fluke um, multimeter, uh, DVM, uh, because uh, it will come in handy. One thing you got to be careful of is uh, on these uh, digital meters, turn the power off when you're done, otherwise you run down the battery. The battery is a 9-volt battery. They're not cheap, okay? So make sure you keep uh, that off. Some of the voltmeters have an off position. It's usually at the top, and uh, I keep, I'm eternally forgetting to to set that right, and I've gone through a lot of 9-volt batteries. There you have it. If you would like to support this channel financially, you certainly may by going to dkassler.com support. There might be a way there that fits or works for you. I would ask you please also to subscribe to the channel. Click like, share, all those good things like that. And until we next meet, 73.